This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 456 of the Stable Scoop Show. Please support our sponsors as they make this show possible. Our sponsors this week are Horselovers.com and Dr. Rose's Remedies is back. We have a fascinating story for you today (laughs) about Janelle's horse, Twister. And we're going to learn all about that together today. And also, we have a product review. Denise is stopping by to review the Ovation Ladies Aqua X Knee Patch Breaches. Plus, Helena has a big announcement, too. We all have that coming up on today's Stable Scoop Radio Show. You're listening to the Stable Scoop Radio Show, where hosts Glenn and Helena guide you through some of the horse world's most fascinating stories. Owning and loving horses means there's always a story to tell. It may be funny, exciting, or inspiring, but it will almost always be fascinating. Join us for The Scoop each week as we tap into the stories that are woven into everything we do, at the barn, at home, and everywhere in between. This is Glenda Geek. And this is Helena B., and you're listening to the Stable Scoop Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. What a fun new bumper you did! Thank you very much. I'm oh, glad that you liked it. was fun. It made you happy. I recorded it at 4.15 in the morning. <laughs> you didn't sound, you sounded, well, maybe that's why you had that deep, sexy voice going on there. <laughs> <laughs> Call it whatever you want. I'll take it. No, it was terrific. It was a lot of fun. Good. I'm glad you liked and it. And I think it really explains well what we're going to be doing from now on. So that's well, perfect. You know, we had this conversation, we had this sort of strategic planning conversation, what seems like a month ago, it was just a few days ago, but so many things have happened in between now and that conversation that when I went to actually write the script and record the voiceover, I couldn't remember (laughs) what I was supposed to write. I'm like, is it amazing stories? Is it fascinating stories? Is it stories at all? Well, we talked about 85 words that we We did. We finally came to fascinating yeah. If you guys think that Glenn and I have interesting conversations on the show, you have to hear us pre-show and post-show. <laughs> we had thesauruses out. <laughs> we cover so much ground. And so I was like, all right, I'm just going <laughs> to – whatever comes out of my mouth is what I'm going to lay down on the track and hope they like it. Well, I'm uh, coming back with a hangover from Rolex, so I'm a little t- – this is my first show since we got back. So I'm a little uh, hungover. I, I, everybody and- that was at Rolex knows exactly what I mean. <laughs> It is a Rolex hangover. Yeah. Yes, I've done Rolex before. Um, did you guys have good weather? I know that it was yeah. kind of rainy one of the days. No, but we we we, we had a half an hour of rain the whole time we were there. It was a hell of a lot better than last year, where it rained all day on Saturday. It was overcast, so it wasn't too hot. It actually turned out perfectly. Yep. Love it. Yep. Love to hear. And no major crashes on cross country. There were some falls, but uh, nobody's hurt. Good. So, uh, That's horses, what I like to hear. riders, okay. Thank God for the airbags, which, you know, I think have saved a lot of ribs. Yes, yes. Uh, and they get more and more sophisticated yeah, with every new product. We got product blown up leaks. again on Sunday. I know. Uh, I saw that. It really made me miss <laughs> being there. The last time you and Jamie got blown up, I was with you. We were That's at right. Ada. That's right. Well, these, this is new. He Light has come out with some really nice looking air vests now. They look like outerwear. You know, yeah. or hunt coats even. And uh, can you wear them under a hunt coat? They are part of the hunt coat. Oh, they're making oh. one that, and they're actually making a going to changing the design now for fox hunters. So you're it's built into the coat. Finally, fox hunters are on the map. Yes, exactly. Look, you know what? Whenever, whenever they you you fill out some kind of survey when you purchase something from a tack company or a manufacturer, they're like, "What kind of riding do you do? Do you barrel race? Do you do team penning? Do you do show jumpers?" Or other. <laughs> There's fox hunting is never listed, so I'm like, other. <laughs> they don't make riding apparel for other. <laughs> well, it uh, it definitely uh, was a lot of fun. We had a great time meeting all the listeners. And, of course, we had an engagement. One of our auditors, Lisa Locke, got engaged to Patrick. Or Patrick asked her to marry him in front of the Bruce uh, Davidson statue. And it was a complete surprise. I had busted his chops at dinner the night before about – you guys have been together for two years. Aren't you going to put a ring on that soon? And he didn't mm. say a word. He didn't Did change you have expression. Any idea? No, <laughs> no idea. He didn't change expression. Nothing that night. I busted his chops pretty good. And then uh, the next day he proposed. So that's he, hysterical. It was I totally know. coincidental, huh? It was, it was. And he had a he had he had the ring made, and it it got done the day before they left. 
Oh my you gosh, leave it to you mode. to bust it wide open. <laughs> so <laughs> she was so excited and so happy. And I, I was, we were all very, that was re- really one of the highlights of the weekend right there. It was fun. Oh. It was fun. And of course, a lot of good riding and, and uh, Michael Young taking another 130, 40 grand home. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, it would probably cost him seven hundred and thirty grand to get there. <laughs> so, you know, winning again like a machine. Oh, but it was fun. We had a good time, and it's good to see Jamie and and everybody as well. Did well, hang out? did Doctor Wendy didn't go? Did she? No. Yep. No. Nope. Oh. Uh, it was uh, Jamie, Jennifer, and I uh, were the hosts that were there, and Reese wasn't okay. even there. She was away for the week the weekend, so she couldn't even come. But it was it was fun to see everybody. One quick announcement too about the cruise: we have almost twenty five cabins sold already, uh, almost, which means about fifty people that have signed oh, up. Oh my gosh! So and that's a week. <laughs> so the travel agent was like, "Wow, you you've sold more than most of the the podcasts that are about cruising sell in their first week." So she said that she had to book a second block of rooms. So we were able to hold the same rate, but if you're thinking about going, put the deposit down so you can guarantee the rate because mm. it will go up as we have to get more blocks of rooms, it will go up. So definitely just put the deposit in. You can always cancel later. You have until November 20th to pay the final tab. So oh, you, you have okay. until later in the year to pay the the balance and the deposits two hundred bucks for a cabin, two tickets, it, it, two people in a cabin. But the deposits only two hundred bucks for the cabin. So, do they have any cabins <laughs> that could take like three or four people? They do, but they get really salty. Mm, and and okay. the problem is the cabins are so small that when families go, they most of the time get two cabins because uh, they're so small. Um, okay, you wouldn't. Okay, you know, you could fit like if it was a toddler. But somebody Grace's size eh. was bigger than me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Way I, you bigger did, than me you'd, now. you'd be very comfy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's okay. I love my daughter, but <laughs> she's a big galump. <laughs> Horseloverscruise.com if you want to learn more about that. And then J- before we get to our fir- our fascinating story today, Helena had, had a, made a little announcement on Facebook, which caused quite a stir. Uh, do you want to explain that? Ugh, yes. Um, so for those of you who have been longtime listeners, you know that um, several years ago, uh, I got divorced. And it was crazy and painful, as divorces typically are. And one of the things that I agreed to um, was to hold on to my house and our little horse farm here in New England uh, for four years. Actually, it, was, it turned out to be more than that, uh, but long enough so that my daughter could uh, didn't have to be displaced from her home. And at the end of a specific time period, we would agree to sell the house and split the proceeds. However, either one of us, meaning my ex-husband or me, would have the option to buy out the other spouse. And uh, whoever won that war depended on who had who placed the higher bid. Well, uh, my dirty, rotten ex decided to, <laughs> to raise his sale price pretty high. He raised the bar pretty high, so... We're kind of left without an option, and we do have to sell the house. So we're looking. We're looking for, I don't know, a new property, a new house. We're not sure. We definitely, definitely want to stay in the beautiful coastal town of Little Compton on the coast of Rhode Island. Uh, We have family here, friends here. Grace goes to school here. The barn is here. and There's just so many wonderful things about this town. So we're... We're trying real hard. The house goes on the market uh, in just a couple of days. Very good. Well, um, what to so if you're interested, if you're if you're interested, um, it will be on Zillow. So if you go to Zillow.com and you search for Little Compton, I will actually put a link up on uh, Facebook at some point in the next week. But if you're interested, it's it's actually. We have – it's a two-acre property, so the our acreage that you pay taxes on, which are very, very low here, is small. But we're surrounded by almost 18 acres of usable land, which uh, we actually free lease. Our horses graze on it, so there is plenty of turnout. We have a two-stall barn. Horses can come and go. They're in and out 24-7. Fencing is included. It does not get any easier to take care of two horses. Handle three because it's a two stall, two stall barn, but it converts to three stall. If you were in Norco, California, they would say it could handle about twelve. 
<laughs> yeah. No, well, I like I I like our property to not be ghetto. <laughs> So, uh, not that a, a people house. in Norco are ghetto. They just put more horses on <laughs> smaller yeah. pieces of property. Well, we should talk about designing. It's California, after all. <laughs> designing a new lot. You should see the sketches I have for a piece of property that we're looking at. The house takes up like an eighth or a sixteenth of the land, and, and turnout is all the rest of it. Um, You're building but it's a, a tiny really... house. You guys are going to live in one of those tiny houses like you see on TV? Not that tiny. Uh, not that tiny, but small. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, yeah, three bedroom, two baths, and it has a guest house that's part of the barn. It's a pretty sweet little spot. It really is. And if you're looking for classic New England architecture, oh, that's it. God. I mean, it is the classic quintessential New England home along the uh, along the ocean. Yeah, um, where you can ride your bike to the beach. Um, the house is, it's a 17... 1750 or 1770. There's some some question. Um so we just say it's 1770. And it does have electric chimney and heat. I can verify <laughs> that. Okay. It does. It yes. even has internet. That's how she's talking to us now. Yes. Yeah. And it, anyway. it is really cute. And I will say that one of the biggest selling points is there's a really good ice cream place right down the street. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, that's what we all hit up the ice cream yeah. place in the summer. Many I think every day we were there, we went to the ice cream place. You can ride to the beach and you can ride on the beach. Yes. From, that's you know, true. Which is on a lot of people's bucket lists. It would be a great, great place, too, if somebody's looking for a second home and they're snowbirds and I'm here in the winter. Uh, it would be fabulous for that, too. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people actually um, come to Little Compton for the summer. They come from all parts of the country. A lot of Texans come to get away from the heat, and um, they bring their horses with them. Mm. So there's there's two two maybe three boarding facilities that are nearby and they're almost always full in the summer with people who come here for the summer or they live here six months out of the year and they want to bring their horses with them so this is ideal for that but honestly it's a great place to raise kids it's a great place for children very good well um i wish you the best of luck in finding a new place and things happen for a reason and this one, I don't know what the re- we never know what the reason is until after. But you never know. That's what Buck says. It's it's just going to be an adventure, and it doesn't matter where we land. It's that we land there together. And aren't those adventures a little easier when there's somebody you love to have them with? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yep. And I mean, I, we look how many times we got displaced <laughs> over the last fifteen years, and we always ended up we always ended up where we were supposed to be. So. You know, it, it all depends on how you look at what life hands you. Now, I know there are certain things that just can't be viewed yeah, in a yeah, positive really light. I'm not, yeah. We're not talking about that. But in situations like this, uh, whatever life does hand you, there's always something good to be found in it. And you just – you have to be a glass half full kind of person. And if you're not, try to get yourself to be that kind of person because things – Things will be a lot better. And, you know, I started doing that years and years ago because there was just so many things that were going wrong in my life. And I said, you know, I can either play the victim and and, and suffer through all this stuff and become identified with my suffering, or I could just choose to find something that's pleasant about this new situation that I have no control over. And through that perspective, um, I found that really the things the bad things in life were fewer and farther in between well let's take a break right now for uh, dr rose's remedies and learn a little bit more about them and then we're going to come back with our fascinating guest of the week janelle west gothard and we're going to and learn a little bit about the amazing story of her horse twister Dr. Rose's Remedies Skin Treatment Salve and Spray are 100% all-natural products. They are anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antiviral, and antifungal. Dr. Rose's are made with all human-grade ingredients and are safe and effective for treatment for all manner of cuts and scrapes on your horse. And Dr. Rose's is the must-have product here at the Horse Radio Network headquarters to keep PT scooters, delicate white pasterns, free from dew poisoning and scratches. Ask for Dr. Rose's at your local tax store or feed supplier online at drrosesremedies.com. That's drrosesremedies.com.
Well, our fascinating guest and story that we have for you this week is Janelle West Gothard, and she's going to tell us the, the story of her horse, Twister, and what happened in that adventure. And helping her out is Pam Miller from Stolen Horse International, who have been on our shows many times. But usually when we have Stolen Horse International on, it's not a good thing. Uh, we, we love them, and we love the work they do, but they're never bringing us good news, so let's hope today is different than that. And Helene and I really don't know this story, so we're, we're learning it along with you. First of all, Janelle, uh, thank you for joining us today. And we want to hear about Twister. So what, what's the story? Well, thank you for having me, Glenn. Um, the story is I was the gen- a gentleman that I was working for. His brother had a friend that offered to let me board my horses there. Didn't want any money. Didn't want anything for it. Uh, five or six months go by and my boss fires me, so I go to start with work, went to work for another company. Right after that, his brother sent me a text message, said, you need to move your horses. Tried to call him, no answer, refused my call. The other gentleman where I had my horses, I called him, and, you know, I told him, you know, give me a little, you know, I'm just starting a new job, give me a couple weeks, and I, that way I can get some money together to get the horses moved to a new place. A couple weeks roll by place that I find falls through literally at the last second. Um, so I'm scrambling. I call him up, let him know, hey, the place fell through. Give me a couple, you know, give me, you know, another week or two. You know, I, I, I swear to God, I'll have the horses move. Um, he's fine with that. No problems as far as I know. Well, day after Thanksgiving, I go to get my horses. My gray horse is there. My black horse twister is gone. Um, asked, you know, I went on, knocked on the door and asked the guy, I said, you know, there to get the horses. And he says, well, your, your black horse is gone. I don't know what to tell you. What? How long has he been gone? He says about a week or so. And I'm like, and you didn't call me and tell me? He says, I didn't think it was important enough to tell you. What? (laughs) Gone for a week. (laughs) Your horse is gone, but it wasn't important enough to tell you. (laughs) Was not important enough to tell me. (laughs) Oh, 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 okay, oh, sorry. I I okay. didn't mean to be laughing, but I don't know what else to do to that statement. <laughs> and your other horse was just fine. And my other like horse, horse was on a vacation. Fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just left. So, he went to Hawaii. He'll be back. <laughs> this, <laughs> sorry, it's not funny because she's probably her, her heart is hurt at this point. So oh, so obviously this begs the question is: Did he say? Did you say? Well, where is my horse? Well, yeah, and I asked him, he goes, well, I don't know. He probably jumped the fence. We haven't been able to find him. Oh, it's not like somebody, he's like, oh, yeah, somebody came in and, and hauled the horse away. The horse just disappeared, and he still the did, horse he said nothing. According to him, he was gone for three days, and when he got back, the horse was gone. So he just assumed the horse jumped the fence and was somewhere. Okay, let me let me just stop you there and say that, and, Je- and Je- Helena will back me up on this. If this was my wife, Jennifer, she would have decked him on the spot. <laughs> she oh, yeah. would have been oh, on yeah. the ground. And then I would have come along and strung him up by his heels. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. Uh, God, I hope this has a happy ending because <laughs> uh, it's a bizarre start. Um, all right. So your horse is gone. Then what? Then I, I load my gray horse up. His name is Smokey load him up and I leave the property and as I'm leaving the property I'm calling Stolen Horse International and just freaking out because I can't get a hold of anyone so I'm sending messages wait a minute let me let me stop you for a second let me stop for a second what made you decide to go with Stolen Horse International versus uh like a search and rescue what what tipped you off to that maybe this was not your horse just jumping out of the over a fence uh because I didn't trust him Okay. Because I, I, I don't know why not. Between his body <laughs> language. Something fishy was going on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I did. You know, the body language, and he would look me in the eye and, you know, kind of stumbling over his words. Yeah, that was a dead giveaway. He wasn't, t- he wasn't telling me the truth. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Um, they would call Stolen Horses International. Finally got a hold of Linda Baca. Um, she called me, and because I, you know, sent my number out to everybody. And I'm like, please, please call me somebody, please. <laughs> and um, called the sheriff's department, got to talk to Linda, called the sheriff's department. 
filed a, a missing horse report. They upgraded it and stole it. And just a, it spent the next several months in stress, anxiety, nightmares, well, worry. Before you go on, uh, did they, did the police department, sheriff's department actually go out and talk to uh, uh, Mr. Forgot to Call You? No, here, it, and here's the funny thing. He would never return their phone calls. Um, she went out there and apparently could never find him at home. Hmm. So, I mean, I just, I, it, it's just like, you know, they, they don't want to um, follow through with what they're doing. Hmm. And it's a little bit more than aggravating because you're beating your head against the wall and you're doing all the groundwork and all the calls and passing out flyers and, and everything in, in the sheriff's department. I, hey, I pay my taxes. You work for me, buddy. <laughs> Do your job. And Pam, <laughs> I'm going to bring Pam in here. Pam, I know that Stolen Horse International uh, requires that really wants you to have a, uh, a police report um, before you get involved because you don't want to be involved with uh, it's my horse, it's not my horse, and all of that stuff. So you guys really get involved at that point, and I assume that at that point you also put out the flyers and uh, announcements and did the Facebook and all of that? We sure did. We sent out alerts um, nationwide on all of the different social media networks as well as sent out a press release to the media which unfortunately, none of the news media picked up Twister's story at the time that it happened. But, um, you know, we, we just pushed on and we kept posting the information everywhere. Janelle was hanging flyers up everywhere she went. And, I mean, I think every group on Facebook um, knows about Twister since November of last year. But uh, we, we definitely spread that word. And, and get it out there. We also do email, direct email alerts to zip code areas. So if a horse goes missing, say, like from Muskogee, Oklahoma, then that's where we focus our zip code alerts on. If somebody calls and says, oh, we saw them in New Holland, PA, then we send email alerts to New Holland, PA. So we try to cover all bases to be able to get that information out and make sure everybody is aware that that horse is definitely stolen. Well, you mentioned New Holland. That brings up a good question. With those alerts going out, do you pretty much have somebody at the auction then that's keeping an eye out? There are people that we um, are friends of that frequent the auction. The auction has made some changes recently where they will not allow video or um, photography in there where they used to. So we were able to review the photos of the horses that were brought in on Sunday for the auction on Monday. But we do have someone that's there. Um, on a weekly basis, typically, that's keeping an eye out for the horses that have come up missing or stolen. Okay. All right, Janelle, what what what, what happened next? What happened next was, you know, just um, in last Wednesday morning, I'm a truck driver. I had been in Colorado Monday morning, dropped a load off there, picked up another load uh, Tuesday morning from Anheuser-Busch, coming back to Muskogee, Oklahoma. Um, Got back to Muskogee, and early that morning, I had the, the, the Tuesday afternoon, I had sent some more videos out of, uh, that I had posted for Twister. And Wednesday morning, I, I went to Facebook and looking through my notifications, and a lady had commented, and she had shared a link under one of the videos. And she goes, I truly believe this is your horse. So I clicked on the link, and as soon as I opened it up, it was a Craigslist sales ad in Tulsa. And I went, oh, my God, it's Twister. I freaked. I started calling Pam. I started call. I <laughs> called Dawn. I called everybody. I'm on Facebook. I'm going, y'all need to call me. We found Twister. <laughs> <laughs> so so That's when you we went into sleuth mode. <laughs> I bet. So what then? So then it was contact the sheriff's office, let the investigator know what that we had found him. Um, and how far away trailer. from you was this? He was less than 13 miles Whoa. from where he had been boarding at. Yeah. Wow. And they put it in the local Craigslist? Yep. So I assume that the uh, sheriff's department paid a visit? Yes. Well, Glenn, let me tell you this, yeah. this much real quick. You know, I mentioned that we post these alerts all over. 
and we covered every group in the state of Oklahoma for horses. And the individual that had posted this ad was actually in a lot of these groups, and there's no way she could have not uh. seen the posts that were continuously being put out there between us and Janelle. It was covered. Okay, well then yeah. I'm taking it back. Less than a few brain cells. I'm gonna go with that then. Okay. Can, have you? I'm yeah. sure you have. I, if you're like me and you're a horse person, you overanalyze a lot of stuff. Did you speculate at all as to why somebody who was clearly aware, or most likely aware, that this horse that you were looking for this horse, why she would then go to Craigslist? Could she have possibly been scared into wanting to get rid of the horse? You know, elsewhere. Meaning, oh geez, they're looking for him. They know he's stolen. Let me go, um, you know, try to offload the horse on Craigslist or something. Do you have an um, idea? I mean, we had an ad on Craigslist as well about the horse being stolen. Oh, all right. There goes <laughs> there that theory. Go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so this is just plain old stupidity. <laughs> You're trying to give this yeah. person a benefit of the doubt, Helena. I, I give really you credit was. for that. I was. I know. <laughs> You're I very nice. Sorry. All yeah. right. So now the police yeah, show up. She, what happens? She, Okay, um, the sheriff pulled in before I did. You know, they had me wait on the road. And um, she's got her horse and my horse loaded up on her trailer because, God love my investigator, she's sneaky. Um, she had called this girl and said, okay, I want to take a look at the horse. I'm interested in possibly buying it for my 15-year-old granddaughter. She has a 3-year-old granddaughter. <laughs> telling me how she spent so much money on this horse and uh, just being really ugly and how I abandoned it. And I'm like, I did not abandon my horses. They told her, the, the two gentlemen told her that I had moved to Texas, had left the horses there. They didn't know how to reach me. Um, just all kinds of crazy, crazy crap. And I've had Twister since he was five weeks old. Why would I abandon him now? So was there any question when the police, I think you skipped a step there. Was there any question when the police came in that this was your horse and that you were getting your horse back? No. No. Okay. No, there was no questions about it at all. All the pictures matched, all the markings matched. Um, he's microchip, which they didn't have a scanner, but you know, that wouldn't have been hard to, to prove taking him to a vet and have him scan it. So did mm -hmm. she actually pay money to this guy? Who's Did he sell your horse or did he just give it away? Mm -mm. He gave it away. Yeah. Did, did he know? Did he know this girl? Well, yes, he does. Uh, uh, apparently, okay. Her story, and I don't know how true this is because I've, I've heard different stories here the last day or two. Um, apparently, these two gentlemen have called her on different occasions and say, hey, "We've got a lost dog. We've got, you know, a stray cow. Nobody can claim it." Da 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 da. People give me horses all the time. Because they know I'll take care of them and I'll find good homes for them. Well, she was fixing to take Twister to an auction. Mm -hmm. Had she gotten my gray, the only reason she didn't get my gray horse Smokey was because he refused refused to load on a two horse straight load trailer. He hates Jeez. two horse straight loads. There you go. Did the police and do just, anything with her, or just tell her, slap her no. hand and walk away? They they took her side. What? They actually yes, they actually took her side. How so? They told me that I could get in trouble, that she could file a lawsuit against me for the boarding of the horse, the training of the horse, and everything else. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I didn't give her permission. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So services provided to you that you didn't even ask for? Exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to go steal your horse. I'm going to ride it. I'm going to train it. I'm going to take care of it. And then I'm going to send you a bill. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Really? When you I put mean, it that I way. I know it's hard when you are when you are law enforcement and you've got two sides to a story, but it was very clear that you were searching for this your horse and yeah. the horse was did not belong to her and of course there's no contract, there's no nothing in writing, there's no services. I, I mean, at no, the end of the I, day they had to say, "Yeah, we it's yours, you're right," didn't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, there was no denying it was mine. I mean, like I told him, I said, we can take him to the vet and have him scanned because yeah. that microchip's going to read back to me. 
I did not give anyone permission to get rid of my horses. Well, I'm, so the Twister's back. Bottom been, line right now, Twister's back, right? Twister is back. Mm -hmm. You have not been sued. I have my baby. Nope. <sighs> okay, good. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> and let, when? Let me tell you something yeah. real quick, just. Just real quick, the girl that had her or had him actually had posted on on her Facebook timeline that she had just picked up a stray horse. And I just wanted to make one little point that all states have laws in regards to a stray animal, and it, they're very explicit about what you have to do if you come across a stray animal. And this individual did not follow those laws. She did not contact law enforcement and inform them that she had found that horse. Mm. Mm. Okay, I didn't. So if yeah. she. If, if she had gotten it in the way in which she explained she did, then she broke several laws in that process. Yeah. So either way, she broke the law, whether she stole the horse or she, quote unquote, found it as a stray and right. failed to follow up appropriately. She broke a couple of laws there. Well, I, I'm assuming so. I, I'm in the process of uh, trying to contact an attorney to find out what the ramifications from all this can be on my end versus her end. So, yeah, it could get interesting. Well, Janelle, I am so happy that this fascinating story had a happy ending because I wasn't too sure there for a while. <laughs> so, Me too. Uh, like, oh, Twister, I, and I love the name. Yes. I love that you had him since he was such a baby. And and I'm and looking at Twister's first, picture. He just kept those gunpowder. I'm looking at Twister's picture, and he kind of has a twisted stripe on the on his nose, so it all kind of fits. That's it just. He, <laughs> yep, that's how he got his name. Yep. And I said he was five weeks old, didn't have a name. <clears throat> And, you know, that that was, I look, took one look at him and fell in love and said, I want him. Well, you go, right you go buy a lottery ticket. You go buy a lottery ticket today, all right? Because, uh, you know what? That's a good thing. Glenn, you know what the funny thing is, is it was seven months exactly to the day from the day that we found out he was missing to the day that he was recovered. Well, we're very happy he was. I know many times we talk to our friends over there at Net Posse and Stolen Horse International, and there's not this happy ending. So uh, I'm, I'm so excited for you. For once, we have one. And that's a, that leads me to a good question there, Pam. Do How many do get recovered? That You deal with a lot of horses. How many do get recovered? We do deal with a lot of horses, and it, it varies um, because there's so many different variables with regards to each individual situation. The first thing that is important is how quickly the horse is reported to us. The quicker um, they're reported, the more likely that there's a good outcome. Um, the second thing is, you know, the circumstances around it. Was it just, come, you know, did it get lost on the trail? Was it missing, spooked, ran out the fence, or did it actually get stolen? But we have about um, a little bit over 50% recovery rate in the past year. Really? I've been noticing, um, yeah. And is that up because of I social media over what it was day. five years ago? Yes, yes. Um, well, social media does help tremendously, but please understand that that is not what we solely use. We do a lot of work in the background that um, the owners don't realize that we are doing. We have um, girls that are constantly watching auction um, the listings and checking for possible matches to our already posted on the website um, missing, lost, or stolen horses. So we've got a team of people that's always looking, and then we're also sending out the email alerts, the, the newsletters, the, um, you know, we have contacts throughout the United States. Debbie has knows so many people from the years of what she's done, you know, with building the organization. And we just, you know, we build up a community like, like you guys. I mean, if it wasn't for you bringing us on and getting the word out there, people wouldn't know about those horses. So, we try to encourage people to go back to the website so that when they're looking to see if that's a possible match, they might actually come across another one that actually is a match that they didn't realize was there. So it's, it's huge. Um, we've probably got 5,000 or more horses on the website right now. And what is the website if people want to go there and look and see if they can help? It is www.netposse.com. That's N-E-T-P-O-S-S-E. Well, Janelle, I am so glad you got Twister back. Enjoy that horse. Give him a great big carrot for us, okay? I sure will. And uh, <laughs> thanks, Pam, again for, for joining us. And uh, we hope that you continue to bring us lovely, nice, happy ending stories. Yeah, well, me too. I like them just as much as you do. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> thanks to you both. All right. Thanks, guys.
Up next, it's the Tack and Habit segment sponsored by Horselovers.com. This week, we have our very own Denise Raymond, who's going to be reviewing the Ovation Ladies Aqua X Knee Patch Breach. I just love breeches. I could never have enough of them. So I'm really excited to hear what you have to say about these because I'm in shopping mode. Well, Helena, these were actually totally outside my comfort zone as far as the type of breeches or or riding pants I ever ride in. So I was really not prepared to like them as much as I do. Jen had to talk me into them, basically, because I was a little skeptical when I read the description about the fabric, and I had a hard time imagining what it must really feel like. Yeah. Um, And so even when I got them, when I first opened them, I I was a little like a little skeptical of the fab and and just because I I didn't know how it was going to wear. And um, so I tested these out over two very hot weekends. I showed showed in them one weekend and then wore them for a long, hot trail ride last weekend. And I have to say that they are probably my new favorite breeches. So, All right, so let, let's back up for a minute. What do you typically ride in? I normally ride in just uh, carrots tights or, or I, I ride in jeans some of the time in the winter, but these are more of a summer a summer breach. Yeah, I, I love carrots like the ice fills and I really do like those. But these are actually more forgiving. They um, they don't show all the, the bad yeah. stuff. That, uh, that I know. <laughs> the, the carrot stuff is comfy, but you, sometimes you want a little more structure to kind of keep everything tucked in where it needs to be tucked in. Exactly. And the other thing that was great about them is that I think with the carrots, they're supposed to kind of be cooling. But these were more of, um, it seemed like, I don't feel like I really sweated in them, you know? I mean, it was like when you, they, it seemed like they really breathed well. Um, the, the fabric feels kind of like, um, it feels sort of like parachute pants when you first see them and you first touch them, but you put them on and they're str- a stretchy material and they're, they're quite stretchy. I mean, I was able to mount and bend my knees and not have any problem. And they, I, it was almost like you forgot you had them on when you were riding. They were, they were just, um, they had some nice pockets, so that was good. So I was able to store money for when I was riding. Um, they also have an unusual feature that I guess is common to breeches, but not to the ones I usually use. At the bottom, they don't, they don't come all the way to the bottom with the same material. Am I conveying that right? Um, they have sort of like a, a stretchy. It's a stretchy material. Yeah, stretchy. that's right. Yep. Yeah, it, it's just not usual for the ones I ride in. So that was an unexpected surprise, but I liked it because under I wore tall boots and under the tall boots, it gave me a lot more breathability. Not only that, so, with those, it doesn't bunch up. You don't get the bunch right. up down there too. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it was, they were so comfortable. They've got some neat features. They also, I'm not, I'm not used to wearing breeches that have buttons and zippers, but that was, that was good because they went on well. They fit well in the waist. They, I found them to be true to size, unfortunately for me, but um, they were true to size. (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, Caught me off guard with that one. (laughs) Uh, The belt, the belt loops, are they big enough for a wide belt? Um, let's see, I'm holding them right here. I'd say sort of a wide belt, maybe not a wide westerny type belt. Okay. Um, but they're they're decent sized loops. The pocket the pocket was big enough and I can also tell you that after I washed them the the pocket was good enough to hold the money that I forgot and left in the pocket even after I washed <laughs> it's them. It's always a nice surprise though. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. The money didn't get lost in the dryer. Um they have unusual knee patches also. They're not, they're not your usual. It's kind of a, a rubbery. They actually, I think it's silicone. It is silicone, and, yeah. Yeah. 
And I liked it because it was it really did seem grippy. I, I wouldn't mind having some full seats that had the same kind of grip. Yeah, but, you um, wouldn't go anywhere in those things. I know. It, I know. I, I liked that feature. It really was nice. These were just super comfortable. The the fabric now I probably will be wearing these more than my tights because I and and will seriously consider buying some more of them, which is good and bad also. I don't know if I can thank Jen for that or not. <laughs> no, I, you, when you find a breach you love, it's like uh, you, you constantly want a new pair of them. It's just a thing. Yeah. Jennifer has a thing with saddle pads. I have a thing with breeches. But you know what? I have, this is probably the third time, fourth time, maybe sixth time that I or someone I know has been pleasantly surprised by the Ovation brand for, for breeches. I have a pair of navy blue full seats that I got, I don't know, on a super sale years ago. And I, these things hang on the primary hook in my closet. I don't care how dirty they are. They're my, my go-to breach all the time. Who knew, you know, for whatever they were, like $69 or $79 at the time. And they've turned out to be one of the best wearing breeches, um, comfortable, versatile, so, you know, kudos to Ovation for knocking it out of the park again. Well, exactly. And this is my first Ovation product, and I am impressed. I also do like that, aside, uh, as opposed to the tights, they aren't going to pick or, or get rips in them as easily if I bump into a tree in the woods. Yeah. So, um, so that's another plus for them. They will wear well, but they're much more comfortable in jeans. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that, that, that breaches do pill when you brush up against trees in the woods. This is not something that ring riders uh, think about. Even eventers don't necessarily think about. But uh, trail riders and fox hunters, we're constantly brushing up against things that we shouldn't be brushing up against. And once you get that kind of, it's like a pull pill. It's, you uh -huh. can't really, it ruins your breaches. You can't really get it out. Right, exactly. And then it turns into a run and then it looks terrible. And, you know, I, I could see these are probably going to last a long time. I didn't yeah. know this. I was looking on Horse Lovers out of curiosity and they have one of the models of these on sale for $70 right now. So if they have your size, um, <laughs> I think it's it's a, a what are you saying, Denise? $70. Oh, Denise, we cannot talk <laughs> offline. We cannot. <laughs> All right. That's the Ovation Ladies Aqua X Knee Patch Breeches. Uh, regular price on horselovers.com is one sixteen ninety five. Of course, we know Horse Lovers is always having sales of all kinds you can get them from 26 regular through 34 regular uh denise seemed to indicate they pretty true to size charcoal and neutral beige so you can get charcoal or beige that's what's available navy. you got navy yeah well that's not available here yet but uh sometimes yeah. we get the products before you know as they're coming out so that might you know, be what you have to do what you have to do is actually go through the sizes, and they have certain colors and certain sizes. Ah, got it. Okay. I see that. Okay, so like 28 regular has uh, charcoal, beige, navy, and blue. So. Yeah, there's an aqua blue that looks gorgeous. I wouldn't mind having a pair of those also. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks, Denise. We appreciate your reviewing for us. And, uh, of course, we also mentioned Denise is our guest wrangler. So thank you for also booking all the guests. Oh, you're welcome. Y'all have a great day. Well, I saw that there's a brand new logo for your brand new show. It's very cute. Oh, for Around the Buoy? Yes, it's very yeah, cute. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I mean, you know, know exactly what it is when you see the logo. Yeah, exactly. That's... That's the point is, you know, these things, and especially, um, we were actually this, the new podcast was officially accepted into the iTunes distribution Yay. library. Yep. Just a few days ago. And so when I went up and looked at all of the boating and sailing podcasts that were there, our logo stood out because it's so different. And what's it called so. again? Around the boy? Let me, let me, boy. <laughs> You can't. can't say you have to buoy. Buoy. Around <laughs> the buoy. I could wow. never be on your show because uh, I, can't, I can't say it. And just because uh, of that, I'm going to have you on the show. B O U Y. B. Well, now now you're going to ask me to spell it, and that's where I'm going to fall <laughs> flat on my face. B, B U O Y. I had it backwards. Okay. B. I'm looking for it on. Um, I use Pocket Casts. Okay. And it is there. It's good. Yep, it's on Pocket Casts. I just subscribed. 
yep, we're on Google Play, Stitcher Radio, Blueberry, Pocket Casts, and iTunes. And um, yeah, it's it's going. It's it's going good. <laughs> Terrific. Well, I just subscribed. Thank you. Well, now let's wrap this thing up. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. You can find all of our show notes and everything about today's show and all of our past episodes, all nine years worth, over at StableScoop.com. You can also download our app, iOS or Android. Just go to the App Store and search for Horse Radio Network. It's simple and it's easy and it's it's the best way to download the shows and to listen to them. And Uh, it's free. And it's free. Free and easy to use. That's it for this week, Alina. That is plenty, but there will be more next week. Until then, listeners, happy scooping.